Ivy, Rebecca. She was just perfect. Everything about the pregnancy and the labor was wonderful. It just wasn't the outcome that I was hoping for. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Welcome to Still a Part of Us. We are so grateful to be here with Sharon today to talk about her sweet little Ivy. I am um, I, I'm looking forward to having this discussion because I think this is one where uh, I think many of us will run into and that could um, ho- hopefully help somebody along their path. So welcome, Sharon. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing her story with us. Thanks for having me and giving me the opportunity to share her with the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And w- always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to do this. So, okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are, um, what you what you do, where you guys kind of are located. And also, okay, would yeah. you tell us a little bit about where you're, like what your family looks like when Ivy was born? Sure. Um, I live in the Midwest, so Chicago suburbs. And at the time, I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I have two living children. Uh, At the time, my daughter was six and my son was two or almost newly two when she was born. Okay. Um, I, at the time, was married and it was just the four of us Yeah. before and then while I was pregnant. Yeah. And any, anything that you guys like to do as a family or at the time or kind of what hobbies um, do you have and everything? I'm trying to think. Yeah, we, uh, we're kind of a gaming family, probably oh. more so my husband and my son uh-huh. than, uh, and my daughter than myself. But, uh-huh. um, so they would, uh, actually at the time, I think Pokemon go was kind of a big thing on the phones or whatever. So mm-hmm. we would all go out for walks together and hunt Pokemon um, was something that we did a lot in our spare time. Um, Which is really fun, actually. (laughs) What's that? It's really fun. (laughs) (laughs) It is. And it gets exercise, right? And then getting the kids out and everyone's having fun. Um, I, uh, a lot when I was home, because my husband worked like a normal nine to five type job Mm -hmm. in the city. And so he had a commute too. So a lot of times during the day with the kids, you know, we'd go and explore things around town and like do a lot of outings with them. Yeah. That sounds super fun. And as just a point of reference, how long ago at the time of this recording was Ivy born? She was born January of 2017. So we are coming up on almost her seventh birthday. Yeah, we're getting really close to that, actually. So it's oh, oh, just, um, just yeah, we're just right underneath it. So yeah, it's, the holidays kind of snowball into her birthday for me. It's all together. Yeah. So this is the start of, of that the time, period. I guess, of remembering her. Yeah. So, um, so you had two kids prior to this and, and, um, was, was Ivy's pregnancy planned or was that a little bit of a surprise? Was this? She was not planned. We were actually, um, so at the time that I got pregnant, my son was still probably about, you know, a year and a half. He was pretty young and Mm -hmm. I was on board with wanting another child still. And my husband wasn't so sure. So we agreed to table it for now. We were good with where we were at for now. And, um, actually kind of funny enough, I was, uh, sitting on my couch and I just had, I guess, hindsight was heartburn, but so bad that I swear I was sitting there and thought that I was having a heart attack. Like, Oh, oh. I was halfway to telling my husband, like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I think I need to go to the emergency room or something. I was in the bathroom, kind of a mess both ways. And yeah, it was just, crazy. And I don't know what prompted me to say, well, maybe I should test because uh, we weren't trying. So I wasn't thinking. And actually with my son, we had to go through quite a bit of fertility. Mm -hmm. Um, So it wasn't even in my head at first that this could be a possibility. But from having tried for so long for my son, I had some tests and stuff saved up. And that's when we figured out, okay, we're pregnant. (laughs) 
So you hadn't necessarily been like outright preventing anything, but you knew that because it was very difficult, just, I mean, just recently, really, that it was probably not going to be anything that would happen readily. (laughs) Oh, totally. Because we tried like for, I think it ended up being 15 months to get pregnant with my son and we're on board with fertility, getting ready to start like, what does IVF look like? We had actually gone for with my son, we had gone mm-hmm, for that mm-hmm. first consult when we found out we were pregnant with him. So it took okay. a long time and many rounds of Clomid to get him. Yeah. So it yeah. just wasn't even a thought in my head. That it until was possible. We were there. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, obviously you, uh, I think you said you were quite surprised. Uh, did you tell your husband or like, well, how did that go did. at the time? Funny enough, I don't remember a lot of the, how like that discussion went or anything like that. But, um, we were both happy. I mean, it oh. wasn't something that was necessarily totally on our ra- on our radar, but we were definitely both yeah. happy to welcome another baby to our family. Oh, good. Okay. That sounds great. Uh, did you tell your kids kind of right away? I mean, obviously your two-year-old probably or one and a half-year-old was probably not cognizant of what was happening, but did you tell your daughter? Yeah. Um, I don't really remember a lot of, I know we, that we told them and I don't remember a lot of kind of how that went. I know like once we expanded to telling like his parents and my parents, like everybody was just really excited Yeah, to have her join the family. And um, just with everything that went on with my son and trying to get pregnant with my son, like I already had a home Doppler. So we were kind of listening to her heartbeat and everybody was just really happy to bring her into our family. That's amazing. Usually we have appointments around eight, nine weeks typically in the United States, is that kind of when you had your checkup or did you kind of go in a little bit quicker after that? Um, no, I went in, I think at the normal, like eight to 10 week mark. Um, I actually had, before I stayed home with my kids, I worked in women's health. So I worked oh. for an ob gyne office okay. and so kind of was very familiar with like how the process goes and um, trying to remember. Yeah. It must've been the early ultrasound that we went to, to see her the first time. Um, yeah. My husband was working and couldn't get off work. So I went with my mom and my oldest daughter, which was kind of just a really special experience to have because she was able to come in with me and she was able to see her on the screen and hear the heartbeat. And I remember that being a lot of fun. Yeah, that's really cool. I wish I could have brought my daughter to some of my, yeah, ultrasounds later down the line. I think that's really sweet. And sure. looked okay. Uh, everything looked okay yeah, at that she one. Looked great heartbeat, heart rate was great. Um, everything was fantastic. Everything looked great. We set up our appointments. I knew that I was going to go with midwives because I had midwives for both of my previous pregnancies. Okay. Um, and I actually knew that I was going to hire a doula as well because oh, okay. I had a doula with my second pregnancy, and it was just fantastic to have. So oh, I did experience. have a doula set up pretty early on in the scheme of things. Um, and what was the thing, I guess maybe what was the experience that you had with that doula, um, previously, was it just like you felt more empowered or advocated for? Um, yeah, the, the doula I had with Ivy's pregnancy was different than, cause the doula I had with my son, um, she had moved out of area. Oh, okay. So, um, the one that I had for Ivy's pregnancy was highly recommended from the doula I had previously. And I had kind of just heard her name around within the birth community because, she was pretty popular in our area. Um, mm-hmm. And I had just known her from working for the ob practice, had seen oh, her face okay. a lot. And it was just a really comfortable friendship, I guess I'll say, from the very beginning. And um, even later towards the end with everything, she played a really pivotal role. Awesome. I am unfamiliar with when doulas, sh- uh, like when people usually employ a doula. I'm not completely sure how to... I think, Do- I is think it fairly early on? Common to, um, get a doula on board probably sometime in the third trimester. Okay. Second or third trimester, just as you're getting kind of closer to the birth. Um, But I knew pretty early on that I wanted to have a doula for my delivery. So I think I started looking for that. Probably I I'm trying to think, I think the first meeting that I had with her might've even been like 12 weeks along or somewhere on there. It was really okay. early. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to get, you know, the providers you want. So it, uh, sure, and she's popular, so I wanted to make yeah. sure that I had her on board for us. And um, yeah, it was actually it was early on, and I remember. I mean, hindsight kind of a thing, but we uh, 
she came to my house to meet us ahead of time and just kind of go over basic things. And um, during that meeting, um, I had gotten up at one point to go and get a drink or something along those mm-hmm. lines and had gotten up and just like, I don't know if it was a blood pressure dip or what, but had fallen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing big. And like, I was fine, but it was just kind of more, probably more embarrassing for me than anything else. Yeah. Um, but the meeting went great and she was on board and um, that was kind of the, I mean, at that point, there wasn't really a lot that needed to go on between her and I. Right. We were able to... um you know, she was always available for me, but it was really more in that as it gets closer to the birth that, you know, she's available for texting back and forth or whatever might be needed. Gotcha. And then with uh, going with a midwife, did was it like a midwife practice or like where there were several midwives that would could and would be involved? It or was. was it, um, my first daughter was with through the practice that I worked for. And okay. then my son had been through a different practice because I had a different insurance at that oh. time. So this was the same group of midwives that I had for my son. Okay. And so I already felt pretty comfortable with, there were, I think, three midwives at the time. And then so appointments, you cycle between all three because you don't right. know who's going to be there when it's time to have yeah. the baby. Okay, great. So you uh, went in, checked in um, around eight to 10 weeks. So it looked good there. And I then- and then did you just have your regular, I mean, cause it's pretty far spaced out at, um, in those early months. It's like once a month, I think. Right. Um, right. So for the beginning, it was once a month and it was, um, I was a stay at home mom. So I would try to schedule those appointments for when my oldest was in preschool so that I could maybe just bring one child with yeah, me to go yes. to those appointments. The juggling. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> I had both of them with me, but I mean, it all worked out. And, yeah. um, my midwife was, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. 20, 25 minutes from where I live. And so we would just, we'd go and we'd either grab lunch before or after. And it was yeah. kind of just part of the outings that we did. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. And everything's looking good. You had some pretty serious heartburn. Any other <laughs> issues that you, oh my or gosh. are you feeling um, pretty yeah, good? I had heartburn and <laughs> nausea, like definitely like wasn't throwing up all the time, but I just felt miserable throughout oh, the whole pregnancy. The like it wasn't pregnancy. just the first trimester. Oh. It was all the way till the end. Bummer. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Gotta love when um, that happens. <laughs> so I, they put me on, um, I don't know if it was Zofran. I feel like it wasn't Zofran, but it was something like Zofran. Um, okay. Yeah. And I was just taking that all the way through the end of the pregnancy. Okay. That's yeah. That is rough when you have that just nausea the entire time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then usually the next kind of the major, um, major appointment uh, that people have is the 20 week anatomy scan or the, yeah. you know, between 18 to 21, 22 weeks, depending on when you guys can get in. Uh, so how did that go? Did, um, was your husband at the time, did, was he able to go to that or was it just you and, and the kids in tow? <laughs> It was actually, so for that one, we made sure that we set, set up an appointment for a time that he could get off work, that he could come to the appointment. Awesome. Um, and we weren't, it was kind of on, I was waffling. I like the idea of not finding out because we did find out for the previous two okay. about her, about gender. Um, yeah. And so we're thinking, we were thinking that maybe we wouldn't find out for this time. Um, just to, we already knew going into this, that this for sure was going to be our last pregnancy and so we kind of toyed with the idea of maybe waiting and keeping it a surprise. But um, when the time came, we, I couldn't, I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I can't do it. So you did right. ask them to tell you at that visit, not necessarily kind of wait and do a reveal or something like that. Yeah. And that whole process was just kind of another uh, unfor- series of unfortunate events. We had driven to go We went and got lunch before the ultrasound because Mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, it's good to have something kind of sugary so that the baby's moving around and they're able to get the pictures that they need to get. So we had lunch beforehand and I was probably over full and we were driving to the hospital and between the morning sickness that I had had and I just lunch, like I ended up getting sick in the car on the way to the appointment. Um, so we parked and went in and the first thing I did was go into the bathroom to kind of get myself as cleaned up as possible oh, to go shoot. in for the appointment. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's not pleasant at all. Oh, I'm so no, sorry. It was kind of, I mean, we just laughed about it because of course. Of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And then um, ha- and then how did she look at the 
on the ultrasound. She looked great. Um, I didn't take them a long time to get the pictures that she needed to take. She was right on par with where she should be. And we were both impatient and wanted to know. So we found out that she was a girl and I was secretly really happy about that. Really? Because I already had my one of each, but I myself growing up never had a sister. So kind of always oh. was really looking forward to giving my daughter a sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, pretty fun. So everything looked great. We found out. Um, and then we, on the way home, stopped at the store to pick up like a baby sister oh. onesie type thing uh-huh. to bring home because that's how we told our families what we were having and oh. broke it to the kids. And my daughter was so excited. Like I said, my son was under two, so I don't think he really had much right. of an idea of what was going on. But uh, she was really excited. Oh, that's really cute and so sweet. I just think, yeah. When you found out it was a girl, um, was your husband at the time happy about that also? Like was Yeah, I think I don't think he really had a preference either way. And we were just both, I mean, she was healthy and that was the that was, most important thing to yeah. us. And amazing. Yeah. And then did you start like thinking of names? Did you have names already? Going we were kind a of list. tossing some things around, but that was um, the part of it too, which I don't know. I mean, it was nice just to know that she's a girl. And then it was like, okay, well, what can we call her so that right. we can refer to her yeah. as that? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was kind of back and forth. We had slightly different tastes and names and kind of different opinions on what we might want to have. But I really very strongly kind of felt drawn to the nature type names, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um. I think he wasn't totally sold at first, but it just really stuck for me. And that's just kind of what it ended up being was Ivy. And then um, I think we were debating at that time between Ivy and Naomi mm. and um, closer to like Thanksgiving time. It just really Ivy cemented for me and we bought a Christmas stocking with her name on it oh. to go with the same ones that the kids had. And yeah. Oh, yeah, she was Ivy. She was Ivy. <laughs> yeah, she was Ivy. Like, Sorry, you're going to have to <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> yeah, and middle names for all of our kids have always been family middle names. So really? Rebecca just came from um, great-grandparents on my mom's side of the family. Yeah, I love that. I love family names. Okay, so that turned out really well. You guys are going along. This is probably fall time now, right? That. Yeah, or, so we was... Um, I guess it was maybe more summer that you probably had that anatomy scan. I feel like it was like maybe August time frame somewhere mm -hmm. that we had that anatomy scan. And then, you know, late fall was when we just really like, we were decorating for Christmas. And I remember yeah. getting a stocking with her name on it. And we have this like Santa list that hangs on the wall and has like our names on it. And we added her name to it. And oh. it was just really enmeshed in everything we had going on with our family I feel like yeah. from before she was even born yeah she's uh yeah and it's so easy to do that if with your Christmas traditions I feel like there's yeah just to include yeah. it's that's so fun it's magical and uh so after a while you're hitting what third trimester and it's starting to be you're you're probably being seen quite a bit more often or is everything looking good at that time? Yeah, everything was normal at appointments. Um, I did, my midwife said, you know, we do feel like she's smaller. Oh, okay. It was fine with me because my first was nine and a half pounds when she was born. And then, oh, oh. <laughs> my, yeah, she was a big girl. And yeah. then my second was um, 714. So okay. he was more of a normal size baby. Yes. And then okay. when they were saying, you know, she's a, she is on the smaller side, I was just anticipating, okay, so she'll be more my son's size. Yeah. Versus, versus mm -hmm. a giant baby. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's just so different, I guess, like having two kids at home already and then having it be in the middle of the holidays, like I was so busy with just day-to-day mm -hmm. -day life. Yeah. Um, when was your due date? Was it in January? She was due on January 21st. So she was actually born the day after she was due. Okay. And so, okay. So um, and had you on your previous pregnancies, had you gone early or later? I bake longer than usual. Um, my first was 40 weeks and five days. And then okay. my second was 41 weeks and two days. So as we wow. got closer to 
<laughs> yeah, long time. I know. But I was like, good on you. <laughs> as we got close, like, I just was felt so at peace about it all. Like, I wasn't, like, her as her due date was approaching, I wasn't anxious, like, when she, when is she going to come? I just had a very calm, like, she'll be here when she's here. And I knew, I think, from working in women's health and then just from the previous kids that I'd had, mm-hmm. you know, it could be anywhere from 38 to 42 weeks. Like, that's. Right the normal scheme of things. And I wasn't really in, I mean, I wanted her here because I wanted, I was getting excited to hold her and meet her. Yeah. But whether that was at 40 weeks or 41 weeks, I really didn't feel a huge urgency of trying to guess when she was going to come. Yeah. You're just fine with how the natural course of things. And um, were you planning on having just what other plans were you having? Was it hospital birth? Was it home birth? Yeah. So my midwives work out of a hospital. So I Mm -hmm. knew that she was going to be born in a hospital Mm -hmm. and we had our doula on board. Um, I was hoping to do a water birth. Um, Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a water birth with my son, but he uh, had some things going on with the NST when I checked in that we weren't able to do that. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, So I was really hoping that this time around I was going to get my water birth and that it was trying to stay home as long as possible before going into the hospital and just kind of a natural plan was on the books the same with I mean my daughter I had an epidural and then my son I ended up going natural and the plan this time around was to try to do it natural again Mm -hmm. okay it's nice that you have a little bit of experience just so you could like oh let's try this now so yeah I think I felt really like just kind of it's gonna be what it's gonna be Mm -hmm. and I'm just here for the ride yeah I that's great I mean it's a good way to a good attitude going into it because I think when you have like this is the way it should only be you're right and probably be disappointed about how things go <laughs> sure yeah okay so um as you're going in for these more regular visits are you are you scheduled to do any NSTs because I know not everybody is slated for those it's only if, I think generally if you're high risk or if they have concerns right are you I'm doing any of those remember I know that we had discussed that if if I went past 40 weeks, then they would do, you know, twice a week NSTs just to kind of monitor and see she, see how she was doing. So that was in the plan. And we had talked about that just because my previous two went over. Yeah. So that was okay. kind of on the plan for if I did go over. But I don't remember, I don't recall ever having um, an extra NST because I was concerned about movement or anything like that. Yeah. And during this time, you were you tracking her movement? Were you counting kicks or anything of that nature? I definitely wasn't counting kicks. I was Mm -hmm. aware of, you know, when she was moving and when, you know, her usual Mm -hmm. movement times were. Um, And from what I can remember, all of that was pretty standard and pretty normal. Um, She was, uh, she was breech for quite a long time. I remember doing, um, you know, it was, must have been, I was over 30 weeks and she was still breech. Mm-hmm. which both of mine had turned by that point, I think, my previous pregnancies. But okay. this was the third pregnancy, so my uterus was already kind of stretched out, and I'm mm-hmm. sure she had plenty of room to kind of – she was a smaller baby, so she yeah. had plenty of room to move around, and nobody was too concerned. But at that point in time, I was doing, like, just different ways of laying or different – To see if you could – type procedures to try to see if I could get her to turn. To move, Okay. Yeah. And, and she that, did finally turn. Oh, she did. I want to say it was right about 36, 37 weeks. Okay. Awesome. And you were able to feel that or they just caught that on ultrasound the next time you were in or? Um, they checked that on ultrasound. One of the ultrasounds I had towards the end of the pregnancy, I know that they checked very quickly just to say, to confirm, okay, yes, she is head down. Okay, good. Yeah. Is that because that can get <laughs> tricky sometimes. Did you notice when yeah. she maybe flipped or anything? Any big movements um, or anything like that? Not that I that? recall. Um, I know I was a little bit concerned about her being breached just because yeah. that would complicate things a little bit for the birth and yes. whatnot. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I recall when specifically she turned. But Okay. Just sometimes n- some people notice kind of big movements when that happens. <laughs> so Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you, you guys are just hanging out at home. You've had a Christmas time. Anything unusual? Anything that, that was of concern during oh, the Everything was normal and good, um, I guess, as we get closer to her birth. Um, I was um, home full time, but I was going to appointments. And um, right around 
39 weeks. I was coming home from an appointment with the midwife where everything, you know, looked fine and normal. And um, I was in a lane to turn and the person that was supposed to turn the other way ended up turning into me. And so we had gotten into a car crash. It wasn't anything like I was fine. She was fine. Um, My car wasn't so fine, but Mm -hmm. it was like front end damage that it took. Yeah. And um, that I think, unfortunately, just dealing with like insurance and rental cars and I need to make sure that I have a rental car that will fit three car seats because uh, so like I feel like all of that car stuff took a lot of my cognitive abilities in that last week of pregnancy that I honestly can say I probably don't know if I was as aware of her movements and Mm -hmm. stuff during that time because I was stressed. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to have to deal with, especially when you know you're not getting your car back very quickly or a new one very quickly. So, yeah, right. that is that is pretty stressful. <laughs> and I didn't at the time, like I know from working in women's health that we would tell, you know, if there's ever any concern or anything happens, you know, come back in. So I mm-hmm, mm-hmm. might have gone in to make sure everything was OK. But at that time, I was literally on my way home from an appointment. Yeah. And you're like, we just saw so, like everything. Like, we just saw her. She was good. I sat when I was sitting in the car waiting, you know, for somebody to come pick me up because my car wasn't drivable. Like I felt her move during that time. So I'm like, oh, she's okay. Like she's. Yeah. Okay. And I think she was fine at that time. Yeah. And were you fine? Like you didn't get hurt or anything no, like no, that? that? I was okay. fine. Everything okay. was good. Um, yeah. And then unfortunately, like a lot of that last week, I just remember being on the phone with insurance (laughs) companies and trying to figure out rentals. And And that is a hassle. I'm so sorry. That is a a pain in the butt. Yeah. Pain in the butt for sure. Um, Okay. Yeah. So then the overall thought was, you know, it ended up working okay because I didn't need my car because I was at home. So the next thing that I would need my car for was to have a car seat for her for after she was born. Right. So tell me uh, the events leading up to when you found out the news. Okay. Um, So I was 40 weeks exactly. Um, Yeah. So it was the evening of four, like at my 40 weeks that I had like late night kind of started having some contractions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, both of my kids were asleep. My husband was asleep and you know, once things started kicking off that I knew that this was labor, like it was just very, it was peaceful in my house. Like I had the lights that were on were dimmed really low. I had some candles going. I was occasionally, you know, bouncing on one of those balls and just kind of riding it out. Like I knew I didn't really necessarily from start to finish do hypnobirthing, but I was familiar with some of the techniques and was just really, it was really special time, I guess, that I had with her. Like I felt very comfortable with the process and what was going on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, occasionally hit, like I had a contraction timer on my phone that I was just, you know, timing the contractions. And I think it was earlier in the morning, like maybe three or four in the morning that I kind of went. And this time my husband did know that I was having contractions and stuff, but I said, you know, go rest because I won't need you for a little while, you know, get some sleep. And I woke him up think about four o'clock in the morning or so and was like, okay, we're getting kind of close now. The okay. plan had always been for my mother-in-law to come to stay with our children right. while we went to the hospital. So I remember I woke my husband up and was like, you know, give your parents a call because it's probably going to be pretty soon here that I'm going to need them here. And him and his half awake, you know, half asleep calls and tells his dad that his mom's going to need to come over in probably about five or six hours. And then he gets off the phone and I'm like, you need to call them back because I need her to come now. Yeah, it's like she needs to. I'm giving her enough time to maybe, you know, get up and get showered and ready. But like, I do need her here pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> um, So that was all in place for her to come. And he did call his parents back to be like, OK, hey, we do need her to come now. And at that point in time, I was in active labor. And I remember I was kind of alternating between being in the bathroom or standing at my kitchen and I was kind of going back and forth between throwing up and, you know, having some orange juice to try to kind of rehydrate myself and throwing up again. And I think at that time in hindsight, like I was probably going through transition. Yeah. And so that was just 
you know, moving on to the final parts of labor. Yeah. Um, in my head, I never thought that I was quite that far along because my first labor was 27 hours. My second oh. labor was, you know, a good 15, 16 hours. So yeah. I thought for sure that I had plenty of more time. Um, yeah. Because it had only been like, what, nine hours or so from the previous you know, night? Maybe. Or? I think at that point in time, it might have been like six hours. Oh, like it okay. Was, yeah. It was not very long and it still felt pretty manageable until it didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were actually, it was cold outside. I don't remember if it was snowing or not, but it was cold. So my mm -hmm. husband had already started the car. My mother-in-law arrived and she was taking care of, you know, getting the kids up and ready for the morning. Um, thank goodness she was here because she was on the second floor of my house with the kids. You know, my husband had the car started. I had already made, I'd been on the phone with my doula yes. throughout this point. And actually, okay. So I'm going to backtrack for a second yeah, because there was one point in time where, um, and this was, I think before I had gone into active labor, like I was kind of concerned about how her movements were and stuff. And my doula had said, okay, well, just, you know, have some juice or something sugary and, you know, do a couple jumping jacks and see if you feel some movements after that. Okay. And I did. And I felt her move. So I was like, okay, okay. She's there. Things are fine. And then so everybody knew, like, my mom was on her way. She heard the plan was for her to be at the birth. So she was going to meet me at the hospital. My okay. doula was going to meet me at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, my husband had the car going, and I was, we already had our bag ready to go. You know, I guess in typical third baby fashion, we really didn't have a bag together until that morning where <laughs> he quickly, like, threw some things into a bag. And but yeah, it was ready to go by the time yep. I was trying to get out the door. So he had the car started, and Sorry, there's sun coming in. Um, sun is something that I associate with ivy. So for the sun to be really bright right now is kind of special. Yeah. Um, so he had started the car and I was literally trying to get my bathroom is off of my kitchen on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of like I was in the bathroom trying to get out of my bathroom to go through the kitchen to get to the front door to get out. and. Yeah. Just like suddenly in my kitchen, all of a sudden I dropped to all fours and she was born. Um, I totally unexpected uh, had like clothes on and everything. And then it was really quick, like, you know, get her out. And yeah, uh, she when she was born, the cord was around her neck five or six times. It was around her neck a lot and really tight. So she was not breathing when she was born. Oh, um, we had to call, my husband called emergency services. And then, yeah, the next thing that I recall was people being in my house. You know, there were a couple of people that were working on her. There was somebody, I mean, I think her role was really to be the distractor. Like she was kind of talking to me and how do I feel? And, you know, she was just trying to engage me with discussions. And I was really more concerned about, you know, is she okay? Right. I think I realized at that point already that she wasn't alive, but there's always that part of you, I guess, that just hopes that like, okay, she's going to go, she's going to get medical, medical attention, and then she's going to be fine. Um, I remember them, so there was a group that took her in an ambulance to the hospital, and then there was, um, and I, then there was another group that took me. Right by ambulance to the hospital. Um, when we got to the hospital, I told my husband, I said, you need to go with her. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll be okay. Go with her, make sure she's okay. And so he went with her and then they brought me into my own room. Um, and then I don't remember how much time had passed, but the neonatologist came in and like, as soon as he walked through the door, I just knew. Yeah. Um, and he said, she's not alive. Oh. Did they know how long that she? He was able to tell me that it looked like she, like just based on kind of what she looked like, that uh -huh. she had passed sometime within 24 hours or so of her, like actually being born. So we just missed her. Oh. Um, my thought on it all was that 
I mean, because it was pretty obvious when she was born, like her cord was around her neck. So it was a cord yeah. accident. Right. Um, my thought is that she got tangled up sometime during the time that she flipped. Yeah. To be head first. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, luckily the hospital that I was at had a cuddle cot. So they kind of like I was already in a room and I remember briefly arguing with the person because whoever was taking care of me was like, well, you know, you've got a tear. We can go ahead and stitch it up. And I remember telling her, no, you know, it'll heal on its own or whatever. I'm not worried about it. But she was pretty insistent on stitching it up. And I didn't really have it in me to fight with her. So I remember just, you know, getting that stitch or whatever that I needed for the tear. And they brought her in to us and it was just perfect. She was honestly just looked like she was sleeping. Yeah. Like it had been so recent that like even her skin tone and everything, she what? looked perfect. like a new baby. Yeah. Um, I, oh, wow. Sharon, can I, yeah, um, and I, I can ahead. I ask you a, quick, a couple of quick questions? I, I am um, like, you know, some people don't think that, um, we usually talk ahead of time just to, so that we understand what's going on. And, but I don't think I realized that you gave birth in your home and, yeah. and, um, so did your husband at the time like assist with that? I mean, or did she just drop out? Like, she, like she just dropped out. Like she was actually in like my pants. Like she was already out. Oh my goodness. Like it uh, just happened so fast. Like I had no idea. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So he, yeah. She, she was out and you know, he, I believe it was either him or I, you know, we unwrapped her really quick trying to yes. think, okay, well let's get the cord unwrapped. And yes, I think he was on the phone with 911 and doing CPR. And yeah. at that point in time, my mother in law was already there. She was upstairs with the kids, thank right. goodness. So they right. were not witness to really yes. any of that. My mom was already on the way to the hospital, but he had called her. So she was then at my door. And that's what I remember like, because we had all the emergency vehicles outside and there was somebody standing at my door just to kind of try to oversee things. And I remember her not really arguing, but just frantic with them. Like, no, I need to go in there. That's my daughter. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it was quite a bit of commotion. Yeah. And when they, you guys got to the hospital and your, um, your husband was with Ivy, did he come in with a neonatologist? I mean, or was he just kind of hanging out with you after a while? Did he know ahead of time? I guess is, did he know? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't, I don't think he was with me yet. Cause I think I would have known from him. Yeah. Had the neonatologist said something. Um, yeah. I think I might have still been in my own form of a recovery room of some sort. Mm -hmm. Um, when the neonatologist come in and to my knowledge, I only recall myself and then the neonatologist there when he told me the next reuniting with my husband that I remember is when I was up in a regular room. Mm -hmm. We were just both devastated. Yeah. I just can imagine, first of all, having just the shock of having a, she just being born like so yeah. suddenly and yeah. then having to uh, kind of think on your feet and calling 911. And, and yeah, that must have been extremely traumatizing to the both of you, I suspect. Yeah, I think there's a lot within those like minutes or hours yeah. of time that I don't even know that I recall or remember on a right. linear standpoint just because I was yeah. in shock yeah did you tell your the rest of your family afterward or yeah after? so my so his mom already knew something was not quite right 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 she was at our house yes when the Everything. emergency vehicles came yeah. um thankfully she can be a little bit pushy but she uh was stayed upstairs with the kids just to kind of keep the kids busy so that was wonderful and yeah. then my mom had taken it upon herself then to make sure that like her siblings and my dad's siblings, because we've got a very close knit extended family. And at the time that I was up in a regular room, everybody was there, like my aunts and uncles, my brother, his brother, our parents, like everybody was there for there. us. And that was just, I mean, I get chills even talking about it now because oh. that was just that's amazing. So special to have yeah. everybody there supporting us and yeah. and getting to meet 
Ivy and too. Get, yes, getting to meet her like, too. Like that was the I wanted everybody to hold her. <laughs> I was like, you know, meet her, hold her. And mm-hmm. we people that wanted to did hold her. And I remember one thing that was super special was my aunt lives in Indiana and she had had a stillbirth oh. many, many years ago. So when I was still a kid, my cousin was stillborn and I was young enough that I really don't remember a lot of the details, but yeah. even her living a few hours away in Indiana, like she was there that same day to sit with me. And that was just to talk to somebody that could kind of understand yeah, where I was at. And even just not necessarily to talk, but to sit with somebody that kind of understood where we were at. Um, it was really special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That space that, yes, just to sit with somebody. Yeah. So, um, so it, she was beautiful. And we had already chosen an aunt and an uncle on the opposite side of the family to be her godparents. Oh, and uh-huh. um, they were both there after she was born. So when somebody from the hospital was able to come in and baptize her like they were there for that and it was just really special to have people there initially and then I felt like that support carried through in even the handful of months right after she was born yeah that is so important to yeah the, that grieving yeah. process they're grieving as well of course that's part of their Ivy's part of their family I, I want to point out one thing that is um, so interesting because you're talking about all these people that are in your room and this was pre-COVID, everybody. This was... Um, yeah, so they could come. Yeah. They could come and they could celebrate like as usual and, and it's, things are different now and i right. um, so grateful that you had that chance to have all that family there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so thankful that the hospital that... Okay, so I didn't make it to my intended hospital. Oh, okay. To give birth because they brought me to a hospital that was just closer, closer. in the vicinity. Yes, okay. Um and thankfully that hospital had a cuddle cot, which at the time I had no idea what that even was right. because I had no reason to know. Yes. But because of the cuddle cot, we were able to keep her. It was two and a half days that I had oh. with her. Oh, and and that was like just as long as they you wanted to keep her. Is that Yeah. So we had her for two and a half days and kind of towards the end of that, like she was starting to change a little bit and, Mm -hmm. you know, we just were able to realize, okay, you know, it's time for us to say goodbye um, and go. And we hadn't, I hadn't told the kids yet. We hadn't told the kids yet that it wasn't a good outcome. Um, I, in hindsight, wish that I would have had them up to the hospital so that they could meet her. Yeah. Um, I mean, with my son, he was so young that maybe that wouldn't have made a difference, but my daughter was definitely old enough to be aware of what was going on. Um, but when my son was born and she came up to the hospital, she really didn't want to leave and was like, well, I want mom with me. And that was hard. And though I might've made a different decision, I think that the decision that I made worked for the time. Cause I was more worried about her having trouble separating from me again. And then how do I navigate but I want to be here with Ivy, but my right. kids at home need me. So I think I just felt like I knew that between the grandmas, my kids were in good hands at home, but I really just wanted to spend as much time as I could with Ivy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so important. So did briefly communicate with my kids during that time okay. just to say, you know, we're okay. We're going to be at the hospital for a couple more days. And like during that time too, my husband was going back and forth between, you know, being there for the kids for periods of time and right. then being and back at the back. hospital with me. Yeah. What did you guys do in the hospital that to kind of make memories or like really be with her? And... This, should I close the blinds? Is this sun not really helping me anymore? No, you, I, I think you actually are. Uh, yeah. You're not totally blown out or anything. And if it reminds okay. you of Ivy, okay. I think then that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, you know, we, I know they brought us, so the funny, we had brought that little sister onesie, like sleeper, to the hospital to, because our plan was to put her in that at some Mm -hmm. point in time, in those first days. Um, And then, for whatever reason, just in the frenzy of everything, like when I'm looking in my bag, I couldn't find any of her things, like, I couldn't find her clothes or whatever. Thankfully, the hospital had stuff that they were able to put her in. Yeah. Um, so she was dressed and 
They brought us like a comb so that we could brush her hair. Um, and that's okay. So I remember like the room that we were in had a rocking chair. So we uh-huh. could rock with her in the rocking chair and they brought us a brush that we could brush her hair. She had a lot of hair, um, which my first and my second had like almost none. So she had so quite a bit is- of like dirty blondish light brown hair on the top of her head. And so I remember just brushing her hair. I think we changed her outfits a few times and just loved on her. Like we just, I sat with her a lot and I feel like every now and then I would put her back in the bassinet just more for preserving her body purposes, I guess, not letting her get too warm, but that urge is there to just want to hold her and love on her the whole time. Yeah. And cuddle and keep up, keep her warm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. And that was, yeah, because the, she needs the bed to keep her cold so that her skin and everything stays, you know, how it's supposed to. But, um, yeah, that's, like the natural mothering inclination is to bundle them up and keep them warm and snuggle them. And she was just, she was perfect. She had perfect little fingers and she was small. She was five pounds, 12 ounces. Oh yeah. So she was a little peanut. I don't remember how long she was, but I think it was probably something on the lower end of average. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Nothing that seemed too, too out of place because my mother-in-law is a small woman. So oh, okay. it just you know, could have been partly genetics that she was smaller. Although, you know, in hindsight, I think with the cord around her neck, that was probably limiting what she was able some to of have. the nutrients and things that she otherwise would have been. Yeah. Been able to get because, yeah. So we had a lot of time with her and she stayed in the room with us the whole time. Um, she was in like a little bassinet just right next to the bed. And we had... You know, various family came and visited and spent time with us and held her. And it was so like even some of the nurses that I had, it was just so special. Like they would come in and they would comment on how beautiful she was or they would. Oh. I had a nurse that would ask, you know, can, can I hold her? And so it was just really special to have some of those normal things that maybe would happen had she been a living baby. Like yeah. there was still. I'm so happy that the hospital that I was at had the training and the ability to be so tender during that time with us. Yeah, it seems like, well, the fact that they have a cuddle cot was a huge, like that does indicate that they've seen loss as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it sounds like these nursing, the nursing staff was very aware and mm-hmm. and and helpful. At the time, did your... I know that you mentioned your doula was very helpful earlier when you mentioned that. Was she able to come in and help you be an advocate during those those couple of days that you had with her? She did. She was there right away. And I think, I mean, I could tell, like, she was as heartbroken as we were. Yeah. Like, she was just had a really, and my midwives, like, um, during the last part of my labor, I couldn't get a hold of my midwife. And oh. I don't remember recall what that was about or concerning, but I know Mm -hmm, that I had mm -hmm. put a call in to my midwife to be like, Hey, you know, we're going to be headed to the hospital soon. And then, um, I remember being a little bit miffed with her because I wasn't able to connect with her during those last maybe couple of hours of labor. And then, you know, right at the hospital, but like the midwives that were not, that were part of the group, but were not on call still came in on their time off. Oh, to come and check on me and to meet Ivy and to just my doula was there on and off throughout the couple of days that I was there, which is way above and beyond what her doula contract was. She does some work with um, like hypnobirthing, um, essential oils and things like that. Um, So she and my uh, midwife had created like a care package that came not right away, but a couple of weeks later, just with like some teas. And uh, my doula was pretty instrumental in after she was born and after I got home, like the next thing that happens is your milk comes. Yes. And um, I think initially I thought that I would want to pump to donate the milk. Okay. Um, and I did pump once or twice in those first couple days just to uh, alleviate some of my pressure, but right. I couldn't do it. Um, mm-hmm. So my doula was able to give me um, some suggestions on 
some methods or some oils that I could use to kind of help dry my milk up. Yeah. And I feel like even still, like one of those oils is uh, sage oil. Mm-hmm. And even now still, like that's one of my favorite scents. Oh. Just because I associate it with her. Yeah. Um, the same with like um, frankincense is an oil that they used when she was baptized. Oh, so that and also, yeah. So that smell always, like I find that at some points in times I'm like searching for that smell because I just associate that with her too because her body smelled like that yeah. after she was baptized for the rest of the time. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, I don't know. So when we were in the hospital, like I, I mean, the next questions that you're faced with is like, well, what happens next? Does she... They asked if we wanted to do an autopsy and I really didn't want to disturb her body in that way, I guess. I think, you know, had she been born in a different way, maybe, but with her having the cord wrapped so tightly around her neck so many times, it it felt like it was fairly cut and dry to me that that was what had happened, what had, what had happened. Um, and is that what the medical team? Yes. Uh, essentially, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Um, And so I chose not to have an autopsy done, but I did say that they could do like a pathology on the placenta to see if there was anything that they could tell from that. Yeah. And all of that came back perfect. Like everything was, everything was perfect. Yeah. I'm so grateful for my mom because she really was able to jump in and kind of spearhead some of the questions that I mean, because you don't expect that in your birth, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do with your baby in terms of, are you going to have to bury them somewhere? Are you going to cremate them? My paternal side of the family has a mausoleum that Mm -hmm. some of my like grandparents and great grandparents are in. And Mm -hmm. actually baby Mark, who's my aunt's son that died a few decades before is also in that mausoleum. So my mom had reached out to my uncle who had already, like they had said that it's fine that Ivy could be in the mausoleum with baby Mark. Yeah. So that was a relief to not have to worry about that portion of things. Like I did have to show up at the funeral home to be there to see her and yeah, because they still like prepared her body and everything. And we did have a short memorial type thing at the at one of the buildings of the cemetery where the mausoleum was oh okay and did all your family come for that all my family all my friends my midwives were there oh, my God. doula was there like everybody was there and showed up for us um i public speaking usually doesn't bother me too much but i didn't really talk at her memorial because i don't mm-hmm. think i had it in my capabilities at that point in time um yeah. but i did pick out a poem for my mom to read that we ended up putting on the back of her prayer card. Cause I guess jumping back, that was another thing that um, at the hospital, they had Bella baby who did like their newborn pictures. Oh yes. But previous to that, like they had never done a bereavement pictures, but they did oh. for I. We had somebody that was a Bella Baby photographer at the hospital that was uh-huh. willing to come in and take pictures of Ivy. Yeah. So we have pictures of her. And then I guess moving forward, Bella Baby did continue to also do the bereavement pictures at that oh, hospital. So that is wonderful. That was really special to have because we had just pictures of her in her christening gown that we were able to use then as the front of her prayer card. Yeah. And we had a family friend who was involved. I don't know what his specific title is, but he was involved with a local church and he was willing to donate his time to come and kind of do the church portion of things for the service. And it was just, I feel really thankful that I had people that were able to kind of make some of those decisions and phone calls and things for me, because I don't know that I had the bandwidth to do that at that point in time. Yeah, you don't. You no. just, you're on autopilot and you're zoned out. Yeah. yeah, that's all of those things. Yeah, that is kind that people stepped up. And I think people realized how shocking this is for, for you and um, for your husband at the time and 
It's kind that they stepped up and helped. So we had the ceremony and she went into the mausoleum and my doula had taken it upon herself to create a meal train for my family. Oh, yeah. For the handful of weeks after Ivy was born where friends and family could sign up and bring us meals and it was nice because, you know, every now and then maybe somebody that dropped off a meal would come in and spend some time with us. But then there were also people that, you know, they just left it outside the door. And yeah. then so we had food to eat, but I didn't always have the bandwidth to sit and talk with people because yes. I feel like a good portion of time after that, like I was just on autopilot, like I still had my older kids to take care of. Um, thank for my husband during that time, too, because really navigated. Um, kind of continuing the routine with my living children. Um, Because even though I didn't have a baby at home to take care of, I still was in that mode of like, I should be taking care of a baby. And exactly, don't know if I have the bandwidth. Like I still, I love my older children and with every piece of me, but I was really kind of stuck and bitter about the fact that I should be taking care of a newborn. Yeah. One thing that was super helpful was when we were in the hospital, my mom had called to ask if I wanted her to put away the newborn things because I'd already had like the swing set up and her bassinet and yeah. all of her clothes. And I'm grateful that they asked because some people that might be important for them to be able to do that on their own. But I knew that, yes, since she had asked that, yes, I would like her to kind of move things. You, okay. So she was able to put those things away. She put those things away. Of, and yeah, so. out of sight so that you didn't have to be always reminded. Right. And actually, after we got back home, so while we were in, <laughs> this is all over the place, I'm sorry. While we were in the hospital, right. they uh, had given us two small, like, stuffed bears mm-hmm. for my son and my daughter to have. Yeah. Um, and I asked them if I could have one as well because... Yeah. That was just like I snuggled on that while I was at the hospital and it came home with me and it's still probably pretty treasured as far as something that I associate with her. Um, That clothing that I couldn't find of hers while we were at the hospital was in the bag the whole time. Oh, so I didn't find it, though, until after we got back home. And so her bear that I got at the hospital wears her little sister. Oh, cute. That's good. Um, so I'm kind of glad that I still have it yeah. because um, there was when it was planning her services and stuff, there was the talk of, well, what will she wear? And I had contemplated having her wear that little sister outfit, but we decided in the end that just getting something new for her to wear would be a better idea. I wanted to keep that onesie. That so, yeah. But, yeah. While you were there also, because um, you hit on that, you got photography, like the photographs done. Were they able to do like hand prints and or hand molds or um, feet yeah, molds? we had um, so we've got like little oval, I don't even know if they're supposed to be ornaments or what they are, but I keep them in like their little dish that they're in, but they were able to make imprints of her hands and oh, her good. feet, okay. And um, they made one, so both hands and both feet, which ended up being wonderful because you know, later on down the road, I did get divorced from her father, mm-hmm. and so because we had two hands and two feet, we were able to kind of split it. So he has a hand and a foot and yeah. I have a hand and a foot. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so we had those, they had the Bella baby pictures that they took. I didn't take a lot of pictures on my own that I recall. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we have a clip of her hair that they took. I have the brush that I brushed her hair with. Yeah. Um, and all of that stuff's just, I've got like a butterfly gift bag. I guess that's the best word for it. Yeah. Tote bag that they yeah. kind of put it all in. And that's what I used. I it's got all the, like the cards that I got after she was born. And all of that stuff is just in there along with the CD that has her photos on it. Yeah. I know. You just get those, that little box to the little bag when you yeah. leave. No little baby with you. So when we bought her little sister outfit, we bought a couple of other outfits mm-hmm. just because, I mean, she, the the way that it lined up with when, cause her sister was born in December. So they were going to be oh. like spot on for mm-hmm. seasons and stuff. So yeah. 
95% of what she got was going to end up being hand-me-downs. Yeah. So the yeah. couple of things that I bought specifically for her are actually still in my closet because I can't bring myself to donate them to somebody or yeah. even get rid of them. So they're still hanging in my closet. Yeah. Yep. You just can't do it. So I understand that. Uh, I was going to ask with the funeral that you guys had or the small service that you had, were the kids able to, were they there at that and were they able they to were there ever at see that. I, her? So that was all, and that was all closed. Okay. Um, it, so I don't think they got a chance to like see her for themselves, but at the point in time that she was in the casket, like she already looked yes, quite she had, different yes, from yeah. what she looked like. So okay. we have like, after we got back home, we did share with them like the pictures that we had okay. of her while she still kind of looked like just a normal little baby. And yeah. um, they came with us. So they were there at the service. And then um, I guess the next closest holiday to that um, at Easter time, we did go to the mausoleum with the kids and brought mm -hmm. like, you know, my son brought his cars and we brought some chalk to just kind of color on the steps. And we brought a little, uh, I can't remember what book it was um but it was a board book that we read like I read to my kids who probably still benefited from it at that age but like it was really us reading to her yeah um and just spent some time there where she was and um I haven't really been back there since just because that's not where I feel close to her okay I feel close to her in my house and I think that that's just because that's the last place yeah that we were together while she was still living. Yeah. Like for a long time, I found like for probably months after she was born, I found myself kind of gravitating to that kitchen sink, like where I was when, when she was born. born. Like yeah. I'd find myself just standing in that area. Yeah. I don't know. Like for a long time afterward, it's like you feel like you're walking around in a daze. Mm -hmm. Like I remember the first outings of going to the grocery store felt so strange because I went to the grocery store in the early parts of my labor with her just to do some walking. Yeah. And so that was the last time that I was with her for her before I knew that she was dead, I guess. So like going to the grocery store for the first time just felt it was hard. Those first times of doing anything yes. afterwards were hard. They are. Extremely so. Uh, Sharon, this has been wonderful to talk to you about Ivy's Ivy's life and, and how much she meant to you. I'm still just so in awe of like just what had happened. And I'm just so sorry. So sorry for it's your It's funny. Life. Like, I think as time has passed, I'm able to kind of, it's weird because in some other dimension where everything was the same up until that point, like, yeah. I think about it like had she been born alive, I don't even know that we would have went to the hospital. Like I think we would have just tucked in at home and yeah. you know, just did our thing. Um yeah. it all sucks. The whole thing sucks. But yes, I think looking at it so many years out now, despite the morning sickness during the duration of the pregnancy, like my labor was everything that I hoped it would be. Like my labor went amazingly and just kind of even like the sweetness that I have of knowing throughout the pregnancy that this was going to be our last pregnancy like I just am so grateful that I was able to cherish that time yeah. that I had with her yeah it, it sounded like you really did Sharon thank you so much um, for sharing and for sharing Ivy's life and I so appreciate the sweet and tenderness like you just sp spoke so tenderly of of her and I I just you can see the love the great love that you have for for her for your family so thank you so much for sharing thank you